Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinker Studio. Welcome to another Blender 2.8 Sculpting and Retopology tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be learning the basics of sculpting in Blender. Sculpt mode is similar to edit mode in that it is used to alter the shape of a model, but sculpt mode uses a very different workflow. Instead of dealing with the individual elements, vertices, edges, and faces, an area of the model is altered using a brush. In other words, instead of selecting a group of vertices, sculpt mode manipulates geometry in the brush region of influence. It is important to remember that in order to do a detailed sculpt, you'll need a fairly dense mesh. It is highly recommended to use a drawing tablet if you're planning on doing any type of sculpting. Let's delete the default cube and add a UV sphere. This will be a dense enough mesh just to learn what the brushes do. In the sculpting workspace, you notice that there is a material added to the UV sphere. This material is called a matte cap. It contains light and reflection information and is used to make it easier to see how the sculpting is affecting the mesh. You still have the standard view such as orthographic and front or side view as well as zoom, rotate, and pan options. On the left side is the toolbar, which contains all the sculpting brushes, as well as an annotation option and a mask option. If you twirl open the symmetry option in the draw panel, you'll notice that symmetry for the x-axis is automatically turned on. And we'll just leave this on for this tutorial. Now if we select the snake hook brush and pull out a face, you notice that it simply stretches the face. This is why we need a dense mesh. Now if we turn on dynamic topology, and then use the same brush, you'll now notice that it is making two new topology on the fly. The detail size determines the level of detail you see as you are sculpting. Relative detail uses a detail size based on the number of pixels and in turn will create topology in that size. Zoom out for big details, zoom in for small, fine details. Constant detail keeps the detail uniform across the entire object. Constant detail can be used, and the detail is based on the percentage of a single blender unit. Let's start with a blank new file. Delete the cube and add a UV sphere. Then in the sculpting workspace, turn on dynamic topology. Switch to constant detail and make the resolution 30. You can drag the edges of the brushes so you can see the names. In the brush panel you notice that you can change the brush radius. You can also do this with the hotkey of F. And then simply moving your pen or your mouse. You can also change the strength of the brush. The shortcut for this is Shift F. 
and just move your pen or mouse in and out. The icon to the right of the radius and strength value fields is the pen pressure option, which is for use with drawing tablets. You also have the option of add, which is the default, and this is used to pull topology out. You also have subtract, which pushes in the topology. The shortcut for subtracting is the control key. The draw brush is the basic brush used in sculpting for adding detail to the mesh. And if you hold down control, we'll do the opposite where it will press in to the mesh. The clay brush is similar to the draw brush in that it simply pushes the topology around. If you hold control, then you will be able to push the topology in. The clay strip brush adds strips of clay to the topology. Again, if you hold control, it will push into the topology. The layer brush pushes out the mesh while keeping the detailed topology. And if you hold control, it will push in the topology. The inflate brush adds topology by pushing out the mesh in a ball-like configuration. It can also be used to inflate other sections of typology of the mesh. If you hold control, it will actually push in the topology. The blob brush is similar to the inflate brush in that it adds ball-like topology to the mesh. If you hold your control key down, you will notice that it pushes in the topology. The crease brush adds creases to the topology. If you hold the control key down, it will actually give you a crease that is pulling out the topology. The smooth brush smooths the topology. If you're using any of the other brushes, if you hold down the shift key, you can use the smooth brush. Then let go of the shift key when you want to go back to using whatever brush you happen to be using. The flatten brush flattens out the topology of the mesh. If you hold down your control key, then you get a contrast. The fill brush will fill in the topology and flatten the area out. Now this is depending upon the surrounding topology.
If I go between these two parts of the mesh, you can see that it's building up the topology between the two, but it's not affecting those two sections of the topology themselves. The scrape brush actually scrapes away the edges of the topology. It's similar to the flatten brush. You hold down your control, you can actually build up peaks. The pinch brush pinches topology together. You can see how it is pulling these edges together. Now this brush is used most often in combination with the crease brush. So if we use the crease brush, then if we go to our pinch brush, you can see how it is pinching the two edges of the crease together. The grab brush pulls topology out from the mesh, but it doesn't add topology. So it essentially is turning off the dynamic topology. The snake hook, however, also pulls out topology, but unlike the grab brush, it actually does add topology to the mesh. The thumb brush essentially needs the topology of the mesh. It's kind of like pushing your thumb into actual clay. The nudge brush does something similar where it actually nudges the topology of the mesh. The rotate brush rotates the topology of the mesh. The mask brush allows you to mask out portions of the mesh that you don't want to be affected by another brush. Simply mask out the area. Then you can use any other brush. And if you try to use it on the masked area, you see that it won't work, but on the unmasked area, it works perfectly fine. Now in order to clear a mask, you simply use Alt-M, and that will clear your mask. Another way of using the mask brush is if you mask a portion of the mesh that you want to work on. This is useful for really small areas, but if you want to work on, let's say, these areas, go ahead and mask the area, and hit Control i and that will invert the mask. And then when you're done, Alt-M will clear the mask. The Simplify brush allows you to lower the topology of an area. And this is useful if you have really dense meshes and you just need to quickly simplify some of the mesh area. And those are the brushes. I would highly recommend the experiment with these brushes to become more familiar with them. I hope you found this useful. If you follow along with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please tweet me your creations or any creations you make in Blender. The link is in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe.